hours after the New York City Pride organization demanded the NYPD issue an apology for the Stonewall riots, Commissioner James O'Neill got right to it. The actions taken by the NYPD were wrong, plain and simple. The actions and the laws were discriminatory and oppressive, and for that, I apologize. New York City is one of a growing number of places around the world being forced to reckon with the past mistreatment of LGBT people by government. There must be an acknowledgement and an apology for this wrongdoing. The time has come for the government to acknowledge and apologize for its past misconduct toward LGBT Americans. The governor of California has pardoned the late civil rights leader Bayard Rustin, who was jailed for homosexual activity in 1953. Be proud that Bayard Rustin is finally getting a pardon that he deserved because he didn't let America become pardoned with bigotry and racism. Bayard Rustin worked closely with Martin Luther King Jr. He also organized the historic 1963 March on Washington. Segregationist Senator Strom Thurmond tried to undermine the march on the Senate floor by highlighting Rustin's arrest for what Thurmond called a, quote, sex perversion charge. It's outrageous that Strom Thurmond used Bayard Rustin's sexual orientation as a way to denigrate the entire civil rights movement. But it's also evidence of the fact that throughout our history, there have been Bayard Rustin's people who have been involved in making important things happen in our society and who have been LGBTQ, but their government either uh, ignored them, mistreated them, or otherwise refused to acknowledge their full humanity. Just to bring you some breaking news, we're just hearing confirmation that thousands of gay and bisexual men convicted of now abolished sexual offenses have been posthumously pardoned. It follows a similar posthumous ruling in favor of World War II codebreaker Alan Turing back in 2013. Alan Turing was prosecuted for gross indecency with another man. He took his own life as a result. Today, I apologize on behalf of MI6 for the way our LGBT plus colleagues and fellow citizens were treated and express my regret to those whose lives were affected. Professor Omar Encarnacion's new book explores the worldwide movement that is demanding governments acknowledge the past abuse of LGBT people. The case I make is one, essentially, that stands on moral grounds. It's not something you have to do because it is the law. Uh, you do them because it is the right thing to do. Moral obligations cannot be simply uh, forgotten. We betrayed you. Today, the Prime Minister apologized on behalf of a nation scarred by history. We were wrong. We are sorry. We will never let this happen again. Not only are we seeing progress around the world on this issue, but we're seeing it also here at home. It is important for the truth of what happened to not be buried. We owe it to the men and women who were persecuted. And joining us here in our studios in Washington is Charles Francis. He is the president of the Mattachini Society of Washington, D.C., which is what? We are an LGBT history society with a motto of archive activism. And by that, I mean we find old materials that have been forgotten, uh, sealed, um, or just basically deleted and use those materials to talk about gay civil rights and the ongoing struggle for gay civil equality. Charles Francis and Pate Feltz, co-founders of the Mattachine Society, have spent the past 10 years uncovering evidence of the decades-long abuse of gay and lesbian people by the U.S. government. Its pro bono counsel from McDermott, Will & Emery has helped build the case. At the heart of the partnership, between McDermott, Will and & Emery and the Mattachine Society is uncovering the forgotten history of discrimination against LGBT Americans, making it known to the world, and making sure that this never happens again. Through our work with the Mattachine Society, we came to understand the depth of this animus that was meted out toward LGBTQ uh, citizens. There's a paper trail, we call it a paper trail of evidentiary history. 
Look, as a former prosecutor, I've seen a lot of cases. I've seen a lot of evidence. And the evidence in this case is overwhelming. There's one memo by John Steele, Chief Program Systems and Instructions Division of the Civil Service Commission. And in it, he writes, our tendency to lean over backwards to rule against a homosexual is simply a manifestation of the revulsion which homosexuality inspires in the normal person. What it boils down to is that most men look upon homosexuality as something uniquely nasty, not just as a form of immorality. Is systematic, government-wide attack on gays and lesbians. Countless thousands of lives were ruined. Their careers were ruined. The single largest group of victims were military service members. Many of our active Army, Army National Guard, and Army Reserve units are heirs to a gallant tradition of service to the nation. Nothing For will decades, be done starting in the late 40s, LGBT Americans were either kicked out of the military or prevented from serving in the first place. But it's not just simply that they were deemed to be different. They were deemed to be a threat. They were deemed to be something that had to be eradicated. The reality is that that manifested in a number of ways. Sometimes people were just fired. Sometimes they committed suicide. Sometimes they were committed to mental institutions. Here at St. Elizabeth's Hospital, where our patients are numbered literally in the thousands. Mattachine's research into the history of St. Elizabeth's, which is now shut down, has helped strengthen its case against the federal government. St. Elizabeth's was located in Washington, D.C., opened in 1855. At its peak, St. Elizabeth's had 8,000 patients. The Mattachine Society and McDermott working together uncovered nightmares, horrible stories of torture, things like electroshock therapies, insulin shock therapies with a view toward curing them or treating them, getting rid of their homosexuality. This is the first federally created institution for the treatment of mentally ill individuals. That's also important because it meant that a lot of the individuals who worked in that facility were able to influence federal policy. We discovered in our research that St. Elizabeth was the headwaters for federal policy discriminating against gays and lesbians. St. Elizabeth's was really the hotbed for pseudoscience, junk science, where doctors were working in partnership with investigators from the Civil Service Commission, which was the forerunner of the Office of Personnel Management, a federal agency that was tasked with J. Edgar Hoover's mission to kick homosexuals out of their jobs with the federal government and with the military. Mattachine uncovered some remarkable evidence about how leaders at this institution spread their theories about homosexuality. So we discovered at doing our research for St. Elizabeth's at the National Museum of Health and Medicine, glass teaching slides. These are reproduction prints of the slides. The slides were actually used from roughly 1900 to 1940, and they were used to teach in medical school and then to brief others. Each slide represents the case study of one patient at St. Elizabeth's, homosexuality sometimes at the heart of the so-called diagnosis. This is entitled Mixed Hysterical subclinical acute homosexual panic. And at the center, it's guilt, 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 narcissism, lack of proper breeding, inferiority, masturbation, broken homes, gender trouble. It's almost impossible to believe that this is something that medical doctors and psychiatrists taught and thought of homosexuality your first reaction is to laugh. They're so bizarre. And then you realize that, that it's serious and that these slides represent the medical practice at the time. 
These case studies from St. Elizabeth's represented real people, people like these. Mattachine found photos along with descriptions of their so-called illnesses. Using the latest AI editing technology, we bring them to life, revealing their humanity. Here's proof that these things happened. It's very, very powerful evidence of what went on in the past. With the mountain of documents it has uncovered over the past decade, along with the evidence of what happened at St. Elizabeth's, Mattachine is presenting its case to Congress. This is an important part of American history, which, if acknowledged, if apologized for, will make us a stronger nation. Let me be perfectly clear. Mattachine is not asking for reparations or money for the victims at all. It is just asking for an acknowledgement and an apology. I think it's important for the government uh, to meet this moral obligation. In recent decades, Congress has gone through a similar exercise of apologizing for misconduct against certain groups of Americans who've been discriminated against historically. Members of Congress have acknowledged past injustices and apologized to Japanese Americans, African Americans, Native Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Chinese immigrants. So, the Congress has done this in the past. The Congress knows that we make mistakes as a nation, and we are better for acknowledging our wrongdoings and apologizing for them. It's a matter of acknowledging and restoring dignity, uh, but it's also a way to lift everyone. This is not just about the gay community. Uh, whenever you lift somebody's spirit, when you restore someone's dignity, you are doing that for society as a whole. Apologies go a long way toward healing. Saying we are sorry means that we will do better, that we will not let this happen again. And that is what we seek here. We want to put this chapter behind us, but not forgotten. That means that we need to have an acknowledgement of what actually happened, the lives destroyed, the persecution, and then contrition to say, we apologize for what happened. Congress is now considering a proposal to do just that. Senators Tim Kaine and Tammy Baldwin, along with Congressman David Cicilline and Mark Takano, have introduced resolutions that would acknowledge this dark chapter in American history and apologize to the LGBT people who were persecuted, both the silent victims lost to history and the courageous fighters who marched into the sunlight fighting for justice, and striving to build a more perfect union for all Americans.